welcome to the show. Thank you for being Thank on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, William. Well, let me tell you about this photo. This was taken at our good friend Andy Pynum's show, Siam to Sydney. Yes, Siam to Sydney, yeah. yeah. I love getting to the venues early because it gives me time to walk around, mm-hmm. get my mind right, get to know the venue, get to talk to the people as well. It's that nice, mm-hmm. quiet moment before the show starts going crazy. And I noticed that these Sydney shows, I, I call it the meeting of the minds, what normally goes on yeah. here with all the officials. What's happening on here? This is actually a requirement by the New South Wales Combat Sports. So the promoter, and in this case, it's um, Andrew Parnham on his Siam to Sydney show. He's walking, he's, um, as officials, we need to know, uh, he sort of gives us a brief of what the combat sports requires of us, what their rules are, uh, their safety issues. Um, we're also going through um, if there's an accident, if there's an emergency and we need an ambulance or we need paramedics in, what doors we're going to use, um, what the procedure is, and just stuff like that. So we're just pretty much going through uh, the rules of the day. Um, so our rules are in line with the combat sports rules, because uh, always the state government rules, they are the main ones over any organization, any uh, uh, sporting organization rules. So I just going through safety issues, that's all. So it's a couple of uh, Pretty much, yeah, yeah. So now, now, now it's mandatory, so whether we're doing whether we're doing like a proper a proper show or whether we're doing like a, even a development day, what we call a development day, where we have, uh, we're developing athletes or um, like sparring days in the gym, uh, which we call development days. Uh, we, once again, we have to go through this. Uh, it's a New South Wales combat sports requirement that we all get together. All the officials are updated of the rules, what rules we're following on the day and the emergency procedures in case there is an emergency. Yeah. Oh, it's great to know. It's actually quite good. It's good to do before every sort of show, you know, go through the rules, uh, emergency procedures, because like, every venue sometimes can be different. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, so when the paramedics do need to come in, uh, it's just good to know where to clear, you know, what entrances are going to come from and uh, what the emergency plan is. And it's good to see everyone working together, the judges, refs, the doctor, the promoter, so everyone's on the same yeah. page in case something happens. Definitely, 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 yeah. This photo was taken that... Rebellion. <laughs> Rebellion. Oh, I should know what number this is. <laughs> but I heard you on the Enter the Double Dragon podcast. You mentioned something very interesting for me. You said that when you're positioning yourself as a referee, you like to think of the triangle rule. Yes. yes. When I'm photographing fights, I love the fights itself, but I also like to have the ref in the picture. You move around a lot to watch the fighters, to watch the action, but you're always placing yourself in a very interesting position you don't really obstruct the photographers or cameramen you have your own methodology i'd like to hear you break down a bit about that well um so what i've been taught from over in thailand is always to you don't want to stay on one side Mm. of the action so you're always trying to walk around to what they say trying to see both sides of the story um so being on so keeping that triangle so where the two athletes are you want to be in the middle of there because that's where you can see all the action. You know, yeah. if you stand behind one of the athletes, you can't see the, you know, the full um, what's happening. So if there's an, an illegal blow that happens, you won't be able to see it because your positioning is out. So it's just always trying to move around, uh, trying to see both sides of the story. So going from the left side over to the right side, you know, back again, um, you're just trying to move and see um, cause in, uh, with Muay Thai, you just have so little time. That's all you've got to make a decision, you know, and you've got to try and position yourself where you can see um, uh, most of the action. Because if you miss something, you know, and then uh, one of the athletes goes down, you have to make a decision. Yep. You know, you have to make some type of call. Uh, and if you've missed it, uh, you know, sometimes we can make the wrong call. So when you're sort of walking around trying to see both sides of the story, um of the bout sorry um you just position yourself to try and see as much as you can so you're trying to minimize your mistakes um we've always been taught you're always going to make mistakes right it's just trying to minimize your mistakes so it doesn't have a major impact on the bout so you don't want the bout uh to be influenced by the referee's uh actions so you just so that's why that's why you just just moving around, trying to, um, and at the end of the day, 
Um, the reason I did start refereeing because it's the best seat in the house. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, and sometimes you're just moving around just to see the bow, you just to see the action. Um, moving around, looking in, um, looking the athletes in the eyes to see who's hurt, who's not hurt, who's exhausted. Um, so you're moving around to assess, uh, you know, uh, just to assess the athletes. You know, you're looking at the footwork, you're looking in their eyes, uh, you, you, you're looking at the chest area to see who's breathing heavy, who's not. Mm. Um, because when you're trying to assess everything, you can better position yourself. Because um, uh, maybe you can see blue's going to go down, you know. So you want to position yourself where you can uh, be in there to save blue when they do sort of hit the floor, or even before that, depending on uh, you know what the scenario is. So it's just it's just moving around, position yourself to have the best possible view to sort of make the best or the a fair decision at that time. Um, because of course, when sometimes, sometimes on the day when you're doing it live, and then afterwards, you, you know, you watch it on the on, on the video. Sometimes we miss stuff, yeah. Uh, and that's because of angles. So you know, being on an angle where you can't see all the action um, can impact, you know, like you know, uh, the uh, the decision of the bout. So they're just trying to get the most information you can on the bout. That's all. It was interesting how you said that you're close enough to see their reactions, how hard, how heavy they were breathing. And like yeah. you said on the Enter the Double Dragon podcast, it only matters if the attack does damage to the opponent. Does that translate well to when you're judging? And do you think it's important for a judge to also ref? I don't think a judge needs to be a ref or has needs to any experience, but they do need to understand um, the referee's actions, so the fouls. Uh, it's good to, do, to talk with, with the referees, uh, sorry, with the judges, um, so they can, you know, if you're sort of following, if you're preparing yourself to jump in, you know, the judges should be looking at, um, at everything, right? So they should, they should be looking at the athletes and maybe sometimes at the referee to see, you know, if I'm ready to sort of stop, uh, jump in and uh, stop when, um, you know, because blue corner's weaker, um, you know, that they can use that for their scoring. They can use that for their scoring. But, of course, their main thing is to concentrate on the bout. But, look, some guys, look, referee, it's a bit of an art form. Yeah. Uh, and not everyone can do it, man. Not everyone is um, – uh, you can be a great judge and you can, like, not be good at referee. And the reverse can also happen. You can be a good referee and not be good at judging. No, uh, to answer your question, no. As a, you don't have to be a referee to be to be a good judge. As a judge, you do have to understand the whole picture. So that's looking at the athletes, and then maybe sometimes watching the referee as well, like what they're doing too. Yeah. Yep. Um, talking about ring craft, was it a big change for you to step into the cage where it's mm. a different environment? Did you even practice yeah. going around in the cage before you went to your first show <laughs> in the cage? With one, uh, no, never. No, that was the first time. That was that was a whole new learning, man. That was a whole new learning. Um, great experience. Uh, total blessing, man. Total blessing. Uh, and I'm so very grateful for that opportunity. It was just totally different, man. When you're in the ring, you know that you have, you know, the two neutral corners are diagonally yeah. opposite each other. You know, red corner and blue corner are diagonally opp opposite each other. Um, when you go into the... Um, at one championship, what we call the circle, um, it's sort of it's 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 a new learning, and you sort of got to uh, the you know the um, the neutral corners are in different position, red and blue are, are in a different position. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it's 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 different. It was a whole a different learning, um, but look, all the experience I've been refereeing since two thousand and three, um, it sort of comes together with experience. It's just like um, uh, the more you practice, the better you get, right? Um, yeah. Same as when you're an athlete, when you're a, you know, when you're, you know, uh, like when you're a boxer, the more you practice, you know, the more bouts you have, the more experience you get, the more comfortable you are. Um, so now I'm getting more and more comfortable um, in, uh, in, in, in the cage. Um, and I'm actually quite enjoying it, quite enjoying it, yeah. No, that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a whole different learning, whole different learning, yeah. I can only imagine. Flashback no. to Rebellion Four. I think this was one of your early. I think this is the early first. appearance, the first appearance, right? That's at Albert Park. That was. You know, you you know yeah. your Melbourne towns pretty well. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I think this could have been my first rebellion. Yes, 
I believe also this rebellion, we had four, uh, sorry, three WMC title fights on the line. And I think that's why mm. it also came down to work on the show. This yep. main event between Mike 300 and Kampan in 2012. I believe. Oh, wow. I think, I think it was. Um, Eight years ago. Wow. Yeah. Well, like you said earlier, when you're close enough to the action, you can sort of see when a fighter is about to go down. This was moments yep. before Mike finished the fight. And also yep. as, as a photographer, you can sort of tell as well. So you plan to frame the action, the shot in a way where you're going to get the best of both worlds. Shortly after he got rocked, I think Mike stepped up with a flying knee or a kick and then finished about the towel mm. got thrown in and the fight was caught off. What goes through your head in this kind of moment? In this kind of moment, look, it's just athlete safety. Look, he's gone through the rope, so he's, he, his safety is the most important thing here. Um, I can't even remember if I saw that towel being thrown in. Unfortunately, the majority of times that the trainers throw the towel in is that they throw it behind the referee. So we didn't even get to, like, we don't even see the towel being thrown in. Um, but at this moment here, the, like, um, I, I, I'm just concerned about the tie. His safety. Uh, trying to un untangle there from the ropes um, and trying to get the, probably the doctor in to um, assess that he's okay, you know. Um, that's the most important thing here. Once they sort of go down or they're getting to go down, the, the, the athlete's safety is um, paramount, man. It's paramount. Yeah. Okay. So you're just trying to untangle him and just, um, yeah, just get the doctor in as quick as possible. Rebellion, Sydney. This was the first time a rebellion moved up to Sydney. Like you said earlier, you want to keep that triangle and you don't want to, you want to stay close to the fighters in case something happens, you could come in. Yep. And this is one of those good examples where uh, a lovely, he got caught with an unfortunate head kick, but head went kick, over yeah. his guard, went down and then you saw it immediately. You rushed in. What's, and I think he was still trying to go on too. What's it like for you? He, to was, to he, he, he was trying to get up. Yeah. yeah. What do you say so to a fighter like that? I look, you're, trying, you're just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. So the kick's gone in, Lee's gone down. Um, and I've jumped in, uh, not, I mean, I guess some, um, you could have called the bout off there, but sometimes, you know, like, cause sometimes, you know, the athletes, so I know Lee and I know how tough he is and I know Lee was trying to get back on, onto his feet. Yeah. So, um, the count is there for the athlete safety. So I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. So I started the count. Um, and I think I've pretty much stopped maybe at five or something like that because um, he just wasn't going to get back up. His feet were sort of uh, gone. And that last sort of image there where I, where I sort of holding him is just like, he's, I think he's tried to get up and he stumbled back down. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, you, you can see that Lee wasn't getting back up. And sometimes the athletes are, uh, what do you call it? Too they're, tough um, for their own good. They're too tough for their own good, man. Yeah. And like Lee, he would never go down, no, you no. know. Uh, He's but as tough I, as they come. I, yeah. And like, I can see from there, like I'm always look, trying to look in their eyes and I could see that he couldn't like register focus, but he's still trying to, you know, trying to, try, trying to move on. And then it just comes to a point where you just say, look, man, it's okay. It's done. It's, it's today. It's done. You know, um, you know, go back, train and then come back another day and, you know, and, and, and have another go, ha have a rematch. But uh, yeah, unfortunately that day for, um, for Lee. Yeah. He, he just got clipped on the head. You can see, See, they're on the first shot. That yeah. <laughs> shit, yeah. I mean, when, when when you get a kick to the head, it's sort of um, it's quite obvious the effects of a of a head kick. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Like you said, you know Lee's very tough, so you gave him the benefit of the doubt. When yeah. it comes to new fighters or even fighters on the development days, someone you haven't yeah. met before, are you a bit more conservative with your your calls? On something like that, if someone receives a head kick like that, yes. So on development days, we tend to be a little bit more conservative. Um, because you want the athletes, um, you know, if they get angry with you for calling it too early, mm. that's okay because I'll go back to the gym, train hard and come back. Um, but if you let it go too long and they get seriously hurt, um, that may discourage them. You know, they may be discouraged and not come back to the gym at all or go back to the gym and train. You know, they may think, oh, I'm no good, I'm whatever. And, uh, you know, I got knocked out and, you know, they leave. So development days yeah safety look or safety in any whether it's professional amateur um development days you know the, the the athlete safety is paramount but yes definitely more conservative on on the development days yeah yeah like i said it's better it's better the athletes are angry with us 
because they can use that anger to go back to the gym and <laughs> yeah. train harder. <laughs> as, like, as opposed, man, if they, if they seriously get knocked out... Um, it's on you. Yeah, man. And you feel you just don't want that. You want the best for the athletes. You want their safety, you know. Um, their safety is the most important. And like some people like Lee, who are too tough for their own good, sometimes we've got to stop that, you know. It's like, man, today it's enough. Go back, train, come back another day. Probably a different story. Now, the Australian Muay Thai scene, it's pretty small. Everyone's friends with each other. Is it hard mm. for you to ref fighters that you know? Look, uh, I've always been taught to um, never see faces, just see red corner and blue corner. So that's when I go in the centre. When I go to the centre ring, I always say red, blue corner, centre ring. Because um, I, from the, very, from the very beginning, I try and distance myself from any personalities because you can get really overwhelmed. I mean, I remember, uh, you know when I started evolution, you know, going up to Evo for the first time, I mean, and he's all these like stars, you know, you've got daddy cool, Wayne Parr. Yeah. It's just so easy to get overwhelmed with all this. Um, especially now with one championship, you go in there and you've got Yod, you've got Georgia Petrosian, you've got, my goodness, you've got so many um, great athletes. So you're always, so I've always been taught red and blue corner. And I try to stick by that because otherwise you just get lost. You just, you just, you, 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 you uh, um, like any job, you know, we, we have a duty of care and we have responsibilities and it's like a job and you've got to treat it like that, you know, red corner, blue corner, fighters, uh, athlete safety is paramount and they're going to take it from there. Yeah. The only time, yeah, the only time I do really remove myself from any bout is that if the athletes come from the same gym that um, I'm at, that sometimes gets a little bit difficult for me. Mm. Um, but also sometimes there's a conflict of interest, but I do... When our athletes are fighting, I do remove myself completely from, from those bouts. Uh, but apart from that, I'm, um, yeah, I just see red and blue yep. as much as I can, yeah. That's pretty cool because I know you had the same persona repping grassroots fights as you do to pro fights and you're very vocal and you had that authority in the ring. That persona yeah. is the same for amateur bouts as it is pro bouts. One of the first things you get taught as a referee is that you're king of the ring. So what it means is that you're king of the ring is that you have to control the whole bout. It means you've got to control the athletes, you've got to control the corners, and you've got to control the crowd. If any one of those things gets out of control, it can really get messy, you know? Things can get really bad. The crowd gets out of control, you know? Chairs start getting thrown. The athletes, you know, they get out of control. Corners get out of control. So you've got to really... It doesn't, like... Your job's your job. So it doesn't matter if they're professional or, or, or amateurs or development day. You know, it's all the same. It's all the same. You're developing yourself or you're training yourself to be at the elite level. So um, you've got to take um, you, your role, your responsibility very, very seriously. Especially development days. I mean, development days, sometimes, okay, say professional, sometimes the matches can be a bit more even. Yep. Sometimes development days, you don't know, you know, um, what you're going to get. So you've got to be more switched on pretty much at development days. Um you know, and really sort of stamp your authority because, um, you know, when they're nervous, sometimes, yeah. you know, they don't listen or they, you know, they, they just do things out of reflex and they don't know they're doing it. Um, I can only imagine it would be pretty scary breaking two first-time fighters out of a clinch because anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's professional. I mean, your job's your job. You just got to go in there. Uh, vocal. That's, um, you have to be vocal. <laughs> it doesn't matter what show because yeah. uh, well, once you get to the biggest shows, when, once you've got the crowd happening, <laughs> yeah. you really, you got to be vocal. <laughs> <laughs> well said, mate. Yeah. Now, every now and then, would you see a Thai versus Thai? This was also on a Siam to Sydney show. Is there any different for you to ref two Thais fights, especially if sometimes they don't speak the best English? How do you communicate yourself to them? Well, uh, as a Muay Thai referee, you do learn the commands in Thai. What I mean by that is that when you do take one do, um, your instructions uh, are in, um, in, in Korean. So you learn how to count in Korean and everything. All, all the instructions are done in Korean. In karate, when you do karate, everything is in Japanese. Uh, so when you're doing Muay Thai, the international language there is Muay Thai. So look, there's three commands, uh, box, stop and separate which is uh chop your yak and then counting to 10 i mean look the ties they're very experienced man they're very experienced so you don't really need to do too much uh they they pretty much 
you just sort of sit back and really enjoy those ones. Yeah. Um, uh, they they don't tend to be what do you call it? They don't tend to fail much. They tend to stay within the rules. It's not that difficult. Yeah. Once you look going through the pathways that I have, um, you learn to speak a little bit of Thai. Uh, but it but sometimes you don't deal with Thai. Sometimes you deal with athletes from Russia, from you know, there's all different countries, you know, and and a lot of them, um, English is not their um, first language. And some of them can't speak English whatsoever. So that, that little bit of tie, those instructions, um, pretty much everyone knows that, yeah. Yep. And then when they foul, you just click, you sort of indicate as well. You show, you show them what the foul is and they, you know, they sort of understand that, um, or like what the foul, what you're talking about, yeah. I think one of the most complex situations I've seen was in Melbourne when a referee had a hard time explaining to a Thai who flew to Melbourne, fight under K1 rules, explaining to him the one hand clinching and yeah. eventually got caught off because he was breaking so many fouls and they didn't know what was going on. I mean, look, that type of that type of scenario, that should be done before we go to the ring. You know, that should be explained before you go into the ring. Once you go to the ring um, and, you know, like, it, it doesn't matter what country they're coming from, if they don't understand the rules of um, that sport, uh, you can have, uh, I mean, but what can you do as a referee, you know? Um, it just, uh, yeah, it should try, it, that should be done before, that should be done before. Yeah. That should be done before to, to eliminate and try to reduce as many fouls as, as, as we can, yeah. Road to Rebellion for That's Yolanda and, uh, yeah. Yolanda I think that's with this school. Nat Edwards, yep. Yolanda just finished she got, the fight. She got cut, yeah? She got cut. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it- right there. I can I can see the blood dripping on the uh, on the canvas. She was on the floor on the canvas. Yep. She lifted her head, and I can see the blood dripping on the canvas. And um, yeah, that was enough. What do you remember from this um, fight? It was quite a high level female Muay Thai fight. Oh yeah, definitely. Very technical. Very technical <laughs> up until this point. Yep. Um, man, elbows just punching. Um, it's very easy to score elbows because once an elbow lands properly, its effects are very clear. It either leaves a mark, redness, or a cut. Yep. Which in this case, was a cut. It was, it was right above the, um, just on the eyelid. So it wasn't in a very good position, unfortunately, for uh, for red corner there. But um, but it was it was a very good, very good technical fight. Yeah, up until that point. So you follow the athlete that's going backwards, because they as ring craft, they're the one you need to cut off. Yeah. So when you need to jump in, um, so the one going backwards, so sometimes, I mean, going backwards doesn't necessarily mean you're losing the bout, but sometimes when they're going backwards, sometimes they're hurt. So you're just sort of following them. This? Our friend, yes. Yep, our mate friend. I remember yes. being ringside at seeing this happen and man, that was a crazy hematoma. What yeah, was, yeah. How do you judge um, an injury like this? And how do you know when you should be calling it off? Okay, when you're calling it off. So at the beginning here, France was receiving a few elbows uh, or, you know, and he wasn't really hurt to begin with. But then he was receiving more and more and more. He's another tough um, one too. Yeah, too tough for his own good as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. France is very, very tough. Um, look, sometimes when you're not sure... You know, you stop it, take it to the doctor and get the doctor's opinion as well. Um, but unfortunately, France was tired. He was getting overwhelmed with the elbows. So sometimes, you know, you just got to step in and um, you don't take it to the doctor. Sometimes you just call it off. Yeah, but um, he did receive a few elbows there. And then he didn't come up at first because a lot of them were, not all of them landed cleanly. Yeah. Yeah, but then when they started, you know, he started getting, he started tiring a little bit more. Um, and then they were sort of coming in and uh, it was like, man, that's enough, yeah. What's it like as a referee seeing something the size of that? Is that like a ticking time bomb? Man, that sort of came up from, that didn't come up straight away. No, after a few rounds, it just grew up. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, um, no, when you see something like that, um, we're, we're, yeah, we're taking that, we're, we're either stopping that or taking that over to the doctor. Like I said before, like he, uh, friends was receiving a, some elbows there before, but he wasn't, I don't think they were clean enough and they weren't because the marking, like I said, elbows are very easy to score. You can yeah. see elbows. When, when the proper elbow is landed, you can see it. Um, and this happened because France was getting more and more tired. 
And then eventually, I think he must have copped another one or two that actually um, just brought it up. And then, like, that was enough. That was yeah. enough, yeah. I don't, from memory, I don't think I, knew, I even took it to the doctor. I think I just called it off. Yeah. I think, but, um, yeah. Yeah, but so, no, so, something like that, man, you just, that's, yeah. You can't let that go on. Yeah, it was nasty. It makes for a cool photo for him, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool photo for him. Yeah. Yeah. Tough boy. Tough boy. You're never too far from the action. What do you remember from yeah. this fight between Brody Stolder and the Sitman Chai boy? Sitman Chai boy, he started to receive way too many leg kicks, unchecked leg kicks. Uh, Brody just got on top. It was sort of, it was, I was sort of going for it. And then uh, young Brody, he just started going with the leg kicks. Uh, and I think uh, Sitman Chai, he sort of switched stance. And That's then Brody went to work on it. Yeah, then he started going to work on the other leg. Um, yeah, when you can't start, you know, when you when your legs can't support you anymore, it's a little bit, um, what do you call it? So in, in this bout here, because Brody was going for those leg kicks, uh, you sort of position yourself well, when they go for, down. The, for the one that's going down. So that's how you can, when you're positioned a little bit better, you can be in there quickly. Mm. You know, when you're too far, when you don't position yourself, when you're not ready, um, you know, I mean, Brody was kicking, kicking, kicking. If I, if I was to stay back, Simon Chai Boy goes down um, too far. Maybe Brody gives another one on the way down. You know, so um, I look, this one here, you could see coming. Yeah. You could see he was really, the, 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 the leg kicks were just coming in. Young Brody just went to town on his legs. And I just, you just, you can just see it coming. So you just um, position yourself. Um, you know, cut off the, uh, the, the weaker athlete. And, um, yeah, when he goes down, uh, cause he was trying to, he was trying, he was trying to battle on with his hands, but he just, unfortunately, young Brody just got those legs and, uh, he went down. Yeah. Similar to what you said, when you've done enough fights, you can s sort of predict what's going to happen. And like yourself, yeah. in this case, you could see that the leg kicks was doing damage. So myself, I was yeah. framing the action in a way where you had space for the fighter if he was a fall have the referee mm. come in and stop the action. That was my picture frame mm. right there. It's all experience. You learn over time. You, yeah, definitely. So you don't focus on one person. I, I like to focus on the whole picture. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You have to. You have to. Yeah. Look, unless like in this scenario here, where young Brody started to get, um, he started to, get, to gain the advantage. So once they gain, gain the advantage, I don't really, so fighter safety is our main thing, right? As a referee, our main thing is fighters is athlete safety. So I didn't have to worry about Brody. So because Brody's kicking, he's fine. Yeah. So it was a Sigma Chai boy that I had to, he's the one that was getting hurt. So my concentration now goes, it's about 80%, mm. 80 to 90% on the Sigma Chai boy. I don't really have to worry about Brody. Um, Cause he, you know, he, he was going strong. Um, yeah. And you just position yourself and you just, you're just ready for it. Another injury. I believe this one was at Warriors way main event with yeah. Alexi. And Alexi, Alexi loves the elbows. He loves drawing blood. In this case, he got cut. And you were debating quite a few times whether or not this should be called. It's nice when the referee and the doctor are in sync discussing what's yeah. happening. And what do you remember from this fight? Oh, from this belt, man. Yeah, he fought Matt, Matt McTavish. Look, this uh, doctor, doctor... Chris Barnes. Yeah, Chris. He's, he's fantastic. fantastic. He's really... Uh, he's, yeah, great doctor. Um, so Alexi got cut the first time. I thought, man, you know, take it over to the doctor to see what he thinks. Um, the doctor said, look, just give him the benefit of doubt. He's, he's all right. And Alexi, you don't really feel cuts. Um, so he's like, man, I'm okay. I'm okay. It was like, yeah. you know, so took it over to the doctor. I think uh, second time, because Matt McTavish, he just kept going. Uh, sorry, not, not Matt, um, Matt Cashmore. Matt Cashmore. Sorry, it's Matt Cashmore. Uh, he just kept going for that. He kept going for uh, for the cut. Kept punching him uh, in that cut. Uh, he got a little bit bigger. So once again, I stopped it. I took it over to the doc. Doc says, look, it's still okay. Just keep an eye on it. Um, and then they kept going. And Matt just kept going. He kept going for that cut. And then all of a sudden, I can see something just flopping around. It was just, you know. So I stopped that, took it to the doctor. And some of the meat had actually come out. Ooh. And doctor said, look, that's enough. So, um, you know, we, 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 we try to give Alexi the benefit of the doubt of coming back. 
Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't do it. Matt capitalized on that cut, kept going for it, kept punching it. Um, I mean, Alexi, uh, I remember it. Um, Alexi on the, like when we called the bout off, he's like, oh, come on, man. Because he couldn't feel it. Like I said, you can't feel the yeah. cut. Um, and then afterwards, uh, backstage, when I went there, he goes, oh, man, thank you for stopping the bout. He goes, I didn't realize um, until they showed him pictures of um, what it actually looked like. It's hard too because some shows like this, there's no live screen, so he can't. The fighter can't see themselves when it's happening. Some yeah. shows where there's a, a live screen of what's happening, they look over to the camera, they see themselves bleeding yeah. like crazy, then they'll agree. Yeah, well, the blood, the blood wasn't that bad because it wasn't going into his, his eyes and stuff. It was just that final one where that where that meat came out and was just wobbling from his eyes. <laughs> that was just a yeah, that, that like that was just enough. Yeah, it just it opened up it, like. Like I said, we, the doctor gave him the benefit of the doubt. He started off not too bad. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, like I said, Matt, just the, he just capitalised on that cut. He just went after it um, and just did the job. He did the yeah. job, opened up that cut. And, um, yeah, finally, we just had to stop it. And this was the main event, too. And it was pretty early on. I wouldn't say it's ever the first round or second round. On I'd say it's a lot to do with your experience, too, as a high-level rep, to be able to call a fight a main event that early on, you know, take the crap that people oh, might yeah. give you because it's, oh, look, today it's your call. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, I'm the one, I'm the one in the ring uh, dealing, you know, with the crap outside. Uh, at the end of the day, if we let that go on and Alexi's vision was impaired afterwards, I'm the one who has to deal with that, you know, and it, I, I, I would rather fighters, athlete, like the athlete safety is paramount you know copying the flag afterwards doesn't matter that's nothing that's yeah. nothing um i'd rather have the athletes safe as possible uh yeah what comes after it doesn't matter as long as you make the right call as long as you're you're doing the best um for the athletes for their safety and like and like we've uh, just seen before sometimes the athletes are just too tough for their own good yeah um but sometimes you just got to step in there and do it man um and then afterwards you just deal with it you know uh usually they can be emotional on the day and maybe a few days after, you know, you may receive uh, an email or some messages. Uh, but then after that, when, you know, when things calm down, they... Um, Social media is brutal, hey? It, it can, yes, yeah. Especially like um, now with one championship, that's, 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 that's brutal because that goes global. Yeah. That goes global. So that's coming from everywhere. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's, it's not just like from Queensland or New South Wales or, yeah. you know, that's coming from everywhere man so but look the main thing is as long as you go in there you do your job and you protect the athletes um that's the main thing after that and sometimes william um whatever whatever decision you make either red or blue is, is going to be angry at you anyway so um as long as you put the athlete safety first and yeah. fairness you know you're following the rules that's the most important you've done your job after that, um, you try and ignore social media. <laughs> Out of curiosity, do you have any advice for up-and-coming referees who are trying to move up the ranks? What's the best piece of advice would you tell them to deal with the pressure of the crowd booing you or corners and promoters? Yeah, just um, like I said before, try and see red and blue corner. Um, as a referee, one of the most intimidating things, uh, like when I started off, you know, sometimes you'd have... You'd have you know, you'd, like you would have Nugget, you know, like Nugget would be cornering one of his boys. Yeah. And you're like, man, wow, Nugget, you know. Or, you know, you might, you might get Wayne Parr in the, you know, uh, the other corner. So you really got to try and see red and blue. Um, try to take personalities out of it as much as you can. Um, and it comes down to experience as well. Um, like when, I, oh, when I'm starting off, you know, Shannon Forrester, when he fought uh, F-16, when he first started, it was like, you know, I like, like I, I, I refereed him. I was like, man, this is Shannon, you know. Um, but it's just all practice, practice, and try as much as you can. Try and see red and blue, as opposed to personalities. Yeah. And that helps, you know. Trying to position yourself, trying to think, okay, what's happening in the bout? Who's going backwards? Who's being hurt? Who's moving forward? And try to get that positioning right. So if you're sort of focused on performing your task, your role, and taking care of the athletes you know taking their their safety as main priority 
um, you sort of deal with all the other stuff as you go along, as you go along. I mean, nerves, man. Wow. Um, I still get nervous now. I still get nervous now. Um, one of the, my highest pressure bout was the, um, the Georgia Petrosian and the Petch Morricot rematch. Yeah, all eyes were on you guys. Dude, I nearly vomited before that. <laughs> uh, before that. I nearly, that's the first time ever I nearly vomited before an event. Um, wow. I was so nervous. Everyone was just like, hey, you're the man, huh? You got that out. <laughs> you got that out. And, you know, I was like, leading up that week, I, was, I, I, I really didn't want to think about it. And I was doing a good job here. But once I went over to, uh, we were in Malaysia, KO, I think. Uh, once we went there, it was just relentless. Everyone was just like, hey, you got the big one. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Um, all eyes on you. Um, and man, it just got really thing. I, like, I remember just sitting there, you know, the entrance songs, all the music and lights are happening yeah. and they're coming down. I think Petch Morricot was the first one to, uh, to come down. And I was like, oh man, I can't do this. First time ever, I was like, I was like paralyzed. Um, but somehow I just, you know, mustered up that strength and went in. Um, and then there was a very, it was a foul very, very, very on um, in the opening seconds. And I had to state my authority. I yeah. had to. Uh, Georgia Petrosian caught the foot um, because it was a kickboxing rule. So, you know, you can't catch. you got to, you know, just hold, release and attack. Um, so I had to really stand my authority there because corners started to arc up. They started to say, hey, what's going on? What's going on? You know, foul, foul. So I really had to put my stand my authority on that one so the bout doesn't get out of control. Because once you lose that respect from both athletes... You lose the control. That, you lose control of the match, you know. Inside the ring, outside the ring, it becomes a mess. So um, you just really got to focus on any referee and judge. Just focus on your task. You know, focus on your task. Um, try position yourself because our role and task and job is quite. Um, it's it's difficult because we don't have a lot of um, your timing is very very quick. You know, like a soccer a soccer referee. You know, they're on one side of the field. You know, if something happens on the other side, you know, they blow the whistle. You know, by the time they run over, they've got about 10, 15 seconds to make up their mind of what they're going to do. You know, are they just going to give us a verbal caution? Are they going to issue a yellow card? You know, in, you know, whatever. Whereas with us, man, you've got, poof, and you've got to make a decision. And if you're out of position um, and you don't see what happened, it just, it just, it's, that, that can be bad, you know. Um, you know, you missed a foul, red corner saw it, and then all of a sudden they're, oh, oh referee, yeah. oh, you missed this, you missed that. And then, and then that plays on your mind, you know. So just doing your task, that's the main thing. It's really, nice to, hear, it's really nice to hear you say you still get nervous after all these bouts too. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, far out. Going on to one championship, man, like some of those guys, you know, you, I, I'd only seen on, uh, you know, on the video on uh, YouTube and stuff. And now I'm actually there in with them. Um, it's quite, um, quite a blessing, quite a blessing. Very grateful. Um, and try not to get overwhelmed by the whole situation. Yeah. Going on from that, you know, you've had your stint overseas working on a lot of national events also back home too. At this yes. particular show at Tiamsa Sydney, we called you up to the ring, giving you uh, a yeah. standing ovation for the work. What was that moment like <laughs> coming back home to where it all started? Oh, man, it's... It, it's I mean, yeah, he's not a man here. I, I mean, as a referee, you, I mean, not many referees get, get, like, get cheered on. You know, it's usually booing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't usually get cheered, so... Um, yeah, it was awesome, man. It was awesome. It's it's so good that um, uh, just a recognition, man. You know, just a recognition that people. It's like, hey, there's an Aussie going overseas. You know, doing stuff. Um, even with the athletes, you see, even when the athletes go overseas, you know, and they come back, just that respect that they get. Um, so no, it's 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 um, it's uh, what do you call it? It's overwhelming that people actually sometimes. See and you know, I mean, the referee. Who cares about the referee, right? Um, but some people actually do watch, which is um, it, it's 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 really nice, really really nice. Yeah, you're doing great work, man, and I look forward to seeing you. more of your bouts. Thank you for coming on to the show, my man. Ah, my my pleasure, my absolute pleasure. Thank you, William.